Most High God, Yahweh and His Son, Yahweh Shah. We say Shabbat Shalom, and we say Quam Yasharala. Quam Yasharala. We come out here not to get in confrontation with anyone, but we come out here for our so-called brothers and our so-called sisters, the so-called black man, the Mexican man, all these that you see on this stroke, this board here, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. A lot of people that's in the church and they go to church every Sunday, they have never heard of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel because the church is not a teaching institution. The church is a money grab. That's what it is and then you have to say it like it is. And we have all our brothers and our sisters, put the camera on our brothers and sisters out here today. We have Brother Yeram, I'm the Prophet Shem. We have all our brothers and sisters out here today. I-N-E, Israelites, not equalized, because if we keep God's law, statutes, and commandments, the Bible says we'll be above all people on the face of the earth. Am I right? right. Yeah. And so that's what we have to do. We have to keep these commandments, brothers and sisters, and they're not hard. They've just been told to us that they're hard, but they're not hard. We can do everything that God say we can do. He say in the book of Matthew 5 and 48, he say, Be ye therefore perfect. Like your father in heaven is perfect. God is not going to tell us something that we can't do. It is a choice that we have to make whether we're going to do it or not. And you have to be with God all the way. And you can't be with him halfway. That's why I be on my people hard all the time. Because they got to get in there all the way. Once God let us through the door, we got to walk on through. We can't be half-stepping and short stroking, even myself. When you find me incorrect and you find me out of order, Pull me to the side and say, look here, Shem, <laughs> and there it is there. That's what we're supposed to do, am I right? Out of love for one another. We're supposed to help one another. So we're going to have Brother Yeram, he's going to read the scripture. We're going to be looking at the book of Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. No, speak to the whole world. The children of Israel. He say, speak to the children of Israel. That they turn and encamp before Pi, Pahai, Pahaiton. Come on. Between Megdal and the sea over against Pi, Pahaiton. Before it shall be encamped by the sea. And Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, Who? the children of Israel, uh -huh. they are entangled in the land, the wilderness have shut them in. See, they in the wilderness. They are there in the wilderness, and not just the wilderness of the physical presence, but they in the wilderness of their spirit as well, because they don't want to obey God. They've already been, but God is going to bring them out. And then it's going to be praising time. Read. For, for Pharaoh, for a say of the children of Israel. What would he say? Pharaoh, for a say of the children of Israel. They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, uh -huh. that he shall fall after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. You got to know, see, God is hardening Pharaoh's heart because he's trying to prove something to the people. That's not your strength right there. I am your strength. Obey me. Honor me. Love me. Listen to me. Not the barrel. Because the barrel done kept you. He made brick masons out of y'all. He made y'all build everything. And you didn't get no money for it or nothing. Everything you built. The trees you planted. The grapes that you planted. You couldn't even get none of the juice. You know what I'm saying? That's just like getting sick and working at a hospital that you can't afford to get sick at. Come on. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fed and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants 
was turned against the people and they say why have we done this go ahead read that we have let israel go from ser serving us uh-huh come on and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him and he took 600 chosen chariots wait a minute he did how many 600 chariots uh -huh. and all the chariots of Egypt and certain and captains over every one of them. Uh-huh. You see, he put captains over people. We don't need no captains. If we confine with what God's words say, why do we need a captain? Why that's do right. we need a lieutenant? Why do we need a king? We already have one king, and that's the king of kings. That's the most high God. Come on. And the Lord hardened of the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. They went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians, but the Egyptians uh -huh. pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camping by the sea besides Piahasa before Baal Septon and when Pharaoh draw nine the children of Israel there were Jew nine, the children of Israel. When he got close to him, come on. Lift up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians march after them. Uh huh. They was in pursuit of them. Come on. And they were so afraid. They were scared, just like we are today. When the white man talked to us, what we do? We, we put our head down, just like William was saying yesterday. When they had those people on those horses and they was doing those things to those Levites, what did they do? He said that they was like, they weren't even trying to defend themselves. They were that's just right. giving up to them. You know what I'm saying? And that's the, that's the mentality that we have because of what we did to God. Obey, disobeying God and stuff. God put the spirit of fear on you. When he tell you in the Bible that he don't give you the spirit of fear. But with that, being disobedient, the spirit of fear became over us. Come on. And the children of Israel cried, out unto the Lord. Every time when we get in a situation, we want to cry to God. But before then, we want to be disobedient and everything. But then when we get in a situation where we can't help ourselves, now we want to go crying to God. God ain't trying to hear all that stuff all the time. But fortunately for them, they should be glad that God did hear them. That's right. Come on. And they say unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, there no what? No graves in Egypt. Uh -huh. Has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Read. Before has thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt? Verse 12. Read. Saying, let us alone. That let us alone, uh -huh. that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Hey, remember when we were reading the book yesterday in Second Edgerus chapter 1? What was it telling us? It was telling us the same thing that this book right here is telling us as well. That's right. It's telling us the same thing. It's the precept. Come on. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. What did Moses tell the people? Fear ye not, stand Moses still. Moses told the people, he said, fear, fear not. He wanted the people to know to fear not because God was with them. That's right. Come on. And see the salvation of the Lord. And see what? The salvation of the Lord. And see the salvation of the Lord. Which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians who ye have 
15 today, you shall see them again no more, forever. <laughs> you ain't gonna see them no more again, they're gonna be destroyed. Come on. The Lord shall fight for you. The Lord will do what? The Lord shall fight for you. That's what he'll do. The Lord will fight for us. Come on. And he shall hold your peace. And he shall do what? He shall hold your peace. Because vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We don't have no military power. We don't have the right ammunition or none of that stuff. Tell it. That's why we have to leave it in the hands of the Most High God and let him do what he do. Because he don't never, he's never been defeated. He's never been defeated. The lawyer ain't never lost the case. The doctor ain't never lost the patient. Or none of that stuff. He's undefeated in all aspects of life. And so that's why he say, leave it up to him. Cast all your burdens on me because I love you. That's what he's telling me. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. That they go forward. Don't be stagnant. Don't be scared. Move on forward like God is telling them. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea. That's what he said in Moses. Come on. And divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And I. Behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, uh -huh. and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. They're going to trick him. They're bringing him into everything. Bring him. He's got them all together. They're going to be one big massacre. Come on. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. That's what he's doing. He's going to show that I'm the Lord. Come on. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. He's going to destroy them. That's what he's going to do. And the angel of Yahweh, which went before the camp of Israel. The what? The camp of Israel. The camp of who? The camp of Israel. That he went to the camp of Israel. Read. We moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Uh huh. Come on. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Read. And it was a cloud of and darkness. To them, but it gave light by night to the, to these, so that the one came not fear the other all the night. Come on. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by strong east wind all that night. And made the sea dry land. Made it dry land. And the waters were divided. Uh huh. And the waters were divided. And read on, brother. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea uh -huh. upon the dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. They had water on the left and water on the right. And it, it, it was just it just flowing, just flowing down, but it wasn't coming over because the sea had been divided. You see what I'm saying, how powerful right. God is? And if you are a servant of God, God can make you powerful because he's the same God. He ain't changed. If he did those things for Moses and everybody, don't, don't you know he can do it for us too? If we obey him, if we be faithful like Moses was, God would do the same thing for us. That's right. Come on. And the uh, Egyptians pursued and went in. See, they got trapped. See, they went on in. They went on in thinking they was bad. Oh, we, we, we really got them now because you see, that we can catch them. We got our chariots. We got our horses and everything. So we can go in there. We can destroy them. But what did God do? Read. After them to the midst of the sea, uh -huh. even all Pharaoh's horses, mm -hmm. his chariots, and his horsemen, 
And it came to pass. What came to pass, brother? That in the morning which the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the whole the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels. You took off the chariot wheels. <laughs> you see? If you take off the chariot wheel, the chariot, they can't do nothing. They can't go nothing. They, they weak. Because they, they strength was in their wheel. Because they were movable objects. You see? And we were on feet. You see what I'm saying? Now, what's happening? You're going to make it something look like, okay? You were so sure that you were going to be able to destroy us. Now, look at you. Look at you now. You don't even ground now. But the Egyptians kept running. See what I'm saying? Because they didn't listen to Moses when Moses told them to go forward. Because God told Moses to tell them to move forward. Because he was with them. I'm with you. But they were still looking back like, who oh, Pharaoh? Just like Lot's wife was when they were destroying Sodom and Gomorrah and she got destroyed with the debris that was skipped, that was destroying the place. She didn't want to leave it. Same way with the Egyptians. They wanted to stay there with Pharaoh. But God is showing them in the midst of all they trouble what he can do for them. Come on. That they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. Let us do what? Let us flee from the face of Israel. But it was too late. Come on. For the Lord fighteth for them. The Lord do what? The Lord fighteth for them. Because God, they saw that God was fighting for us. You see what I'm saying? Now they, now they want to turn around. But something's going to happen. Come on. The Egyptians and the Lord said unto Moses. What did he say to Moses, brother? Stretch out thy hand. Stretch do what? Stretch out thy hand. Stretch out your hand. Over the sea. Uh-huh. That the waters may come again. That the waters may do what? That the waters may come again. Now they're in the middle of the ocean. They're in the middle of the sea. See what I'm saying? Now, read. Upon the Egyptians, uh -huh. upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And what? And Moses stretched forth his hand uh -huh. over the sea. Moses did what? He obeyed God. He didn't have no fear. He trusted what God said. Come on. And the sea returned to his strength. And the sea returned to what? His strength. The sea turned to its strength, its power. It came together again. Come on. Because it was divided. Now it's coming back in its natural habitat. Come on. Where the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians. He did what? He overthrew the Egyptians. He overthrew the Egyptians. In the midst of the sea. Uh huh. And the waters returned. And covered the chariots. And the water did what? And the water returned and covered the chariots. The water came and drowned them. Come on. And the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, they returned. They remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walk upon dry land. They did what? Walk upon dry you land. You tell me they didn't drown with the, with the Pharaoh and the Egyptians? They did what? They walk upon the dry land. They walked upon dry land. Come on. In the midst of the sea. In the midst of what? Of the sea. In the sea they walked upon dry land. Come on. And the waters were a wall unto them and the waters was what and the waters and the waters were a wall unto them it was a wall unto them come on on their right hand uh -huh. and on their left and on their left on both sides thus said the lord because that was only an entrance and a what and an exit but the left and the right side were falling water was falling like a stream that's right come on save israel that day he did what Save Israel that day. The Lord saved Israel that day. Come on. Out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians there upon the seashore. They were just laying everywhere dead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, that's how powerful the God that we serve is. 
I don't know about these other little G-Gods that everybody want to call themselves servants, but the big G-God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Noah, that's the power that he has. He has the power that surpasses any other God, any other king, because he is the king of kings, the God of God, the Lord of lords, and above him there is no other. There is no other that's above, above him. He is above everything on this planet. Come on. And Israel saw that great work. They did what? And Israel saw that great work. Israel saw the great work of the Lord. Now, this is the first time that God is really putting in their mind. Now, I'm, now they want to see. They want to see the work of God. But God had been doing great work among them all the time. But they was looking for some other stuff. That's just like it is out here in the world today. We might be looking for, oh, oh, I, I won the lottery. Oh, I got this and that. But God might want to give you peace. God might want to give you safety. You know what I'm saying? We don't look at that. We look at that as small things. But only the monetary thing and the things of this world, we look at as it's so much. But everything that God does for us is better than we can do for ourselves. Nothing is better than what God can do for us. Come on. Which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord. When they say the people feared the Lord, the people, they, they start to obey God. Come on. And believed the Lord and his servant Moses. They believed the Lord and his servant Moses. That's what's happening. You see, when they when that fear comes into you, it's not like, oh, 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 I'm scared. No, you go to obey him. Because that's what it says. They start to obey God. They yeah. start doing what God said. And now that's why it's going to take us now, when they start the fearing God and the obeying God, that's when we go to the book of Psalms, chapter 146 and 147, and we're going to see the things that we should do for the Most High God, that He brought us through all the things that He brought us through. We got to see more so what it is that we should be doing because God has been so good to us. Psalm 146, 